One of the best and most common ways to automate your work is by filling out a quick form. You or your users spend a few seconds filling out the fields and then you've got all the information you need to run automated actions in dozens of other apps. Today, I wanna to show you a platform that's combining forms and automations into a single package. Let's take a look at JotForm and their newly updated automation feature called Workflows. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we design and implement automated workflows for our clients using no-code and low-code software. If you'd like to see more automation tips and tutorials every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, we're going to explore JotForm and their workflow automation features. Before we get started, I'd like to thank JotForm for sponsoring this video. They reached out and asked us to explore the platform on our channel, and there are some unique automation features I just have to tell you about. But as always, I'll be sharing my own opinions in this video. To begin, I'll give you a quick overview of what JotForm is. Then I'll show you how to build an automated workflow in JotForm step by step. Along the way, we'll take a look at some key features like approvals, signatures, and conditional logic, all connected to some really, really nice forms. Finally, we'll wrap things up with a brief look at JotForm's pricing. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. First, for the unfamiliar, what is JotForm? As the name suggests, JotForm is an app dedicated to building forms. However, JotForm goes far beyond what you'd see in an app like Google Forms. They've got extensive features for collecting any answers and information you want. On top of the standard text and multiple choice fields that you'd expect from any form app, there's also options for processing payment or inserting a CAPTCHA into your forms to prevent bot spam. With these kinds of fields, you can use JotForm to build simple storefronts, to send and sign documents, and a lot more. And you can put all of this together with a clean, intuitive drag and drop interface. But the feature that grabbed our eyes the most is the ability to build automated workflows. With JotForm's newly branded Workflows feature, you can run custom automated actions whenever a form response is submitted. You can use these automations to assign tasks, send simple notifications, and request signatures all within JotForm alone. Through integrations, you can also connect to dozens of supported apps like Google Drive, HubSpot, Dropbox, MailChimp, and Salesforce, just to name a few. Let's take a first-hand look at JotForm's approvals and other automated actions by building a simple workflow. You can create workflows from templates if you'd like to get a quick start, but I'll be building one from scratch today so you can see how it all works step by step. To create a workflow in JotForm, begin by opening up a form that you'd like to automate. Here, I've got a form that my team can use to request reimbursements for business-related expenses. We've got some pretty standard fields for that here. Name, email address, the total cost, a file upload for scanned receipts, and a few others. If you'd like to follow along, most of these fields will be optional, but for the sake of the workflow that we want to build, make sure to include three specific fields, your email, supervisor's email, and expense category. Here's what our finished workflow will do. Whenever someone submits a request, their supervisor will be notified and asked to review the request. That's why we need their email address. Then, if they approve and sign off on the request, the details of the expense will be automatically uploaded to Google Drive. Finally, if the expenses category is set to software, a task will be created for the original submitter to add a software credential to the team's password manager. To create a workflow, click on this arrow next to Form Builder. This opens up a menu of other tools available in JotForm, like tables and mail, but we're interested in Workflow Builder. We've got a new workflow with just one element already in place, starting point form. This is your workflow's trigger or the event that prompts it to run. This automation will run whenever someone submits a response to a chosen form. If you click this element, you'll see buttons where you can view or edit the form, but there's nothing that we need to configure here. Let's add an automated action to perform when this automation runs. To add an automated action to your workflow in JotForm, Drag a workflow element from this panel on the left into an empty element on your canvas. For our first action in this workflow, we want to send the expense request to a supervisor who can approve or deny it. We could use an approval step for this, but let's get that extra layer of verification. I'll use the approve and sign element so that the workflow will require a John Hancock from the supervisor as well. Unlike the trigger, this action will require some additional configuration. Click on the element in your canvas and then choose Settings. 
This will open up a panel on the right where you can adjust all of the parameters you'd like. In the General tab, you can see the main options for setting up this step. First, you can define the possible outcomes. By default, there are two, Approved and Deny. You can add more if you'd like or edit the existing ones, but I'm fine with just the two defaults for now. Next, you can choose which outcomes will require a signature. We'll just ask for a signature for approval. Then, you can choose who will be asked to review and sign by providing one or more email addresses. By default, your account's email address will be entered here. Let's delete that and instead send this to whomever is identified as the supervisor when someone fills out the form. Click on Form Fields to access the form's data. You'll see a list of all compatible fields. In this case, that's just the fields asking for an email address. I'll choose the Supervisor Email field. With Completion Rule, you can choose how many people need to sign the document. We only have one person reviewing and signing, so we'll pick Require Response from one person. Here, you can choose if your signers will get notified via email. I'll leave that enabled, and I'll also require a login for the signer. Those are all the general settings. Under the Advanced tab, you can set several additional options like the ability to reassign, require comments, or set an expiration date. I'll just enable Request More Information so the supervisor can ask for more info before making their final choice. This action itself is all set. Next, we need to set up two paths for each possible outcome here, Approve and Deny. To add a new element to a workflow, mouse over the edge of an existing element, then click and drag to draw an arrow pointing to the next steps. When you release, JotForm will add a new empty element to the end of the arrow. If you place a new element after a step with multiple outcomes, you'll need to choose which outcome this path belongs to. Click Select Outcome and choose an outcome. We'll build a path for denied requests first since that will just be one action. Again, we can drag and drop elements from this left-hand menu. If the request is denied by a supervisor, we just want to send a brief email announcing it to the original submitter. So I'll drag and drop the email action. Once again, click on Settings to configure this step. There are three tabs here, one for composing the email, one for choosing recipients, and one for advanced settings. In the Email tab, we'll fill in a custom subject line. In this field, and in most fields in JotForm workflows, you can type directly and include dynamic data retrieved from your form responses. So in our subject, we'll include the expense date and summary for easy reference. Then you can customize the email contents or email body however you'd like. JotForm provides a nicely formatted template which includes a summary of all the fields in the form. All of this can be edited or deleted entirely if you'd like to start from scratch. We'll just update the description at the top to explain that the request for reimbursement has been denied. For the recipients, we'll once again use the form fields to send this email to the person who filled out the form in the first place. Note that you will need a paid plan to send emails to multiple recipients. Once you've composed your email and chosen your recipients, you can test the email to see what it looks like in your inbox. Our test email looks good, so this email action is all set. And that means the deny path is all done too. So now, let's create a path for approved expenses. Just click and drag to draw a new path. I'll draw this one off to the left to differentiate it from the deny path on the right. Then select the outcome for this path. That will be approve. When a submission is approved, we want to upload a record of it to Google Drive. To add actions to your JotForm workflows that connect to other apps, click on the Integrations tab in the Elements menu. Then find the app you want to connect to. In our case, that will be Google Drive. For now, all of the integration elements are focused on creating new data. Hopefully they'll add some more depth here in the future. It would be nice to be able to search and retrieve data as well. But for this tutorial, we'll be fine with the one action already available for Drive, Send Files. This will let us automatically upload a file to Drive. Drag and drop it into your workflow. In order to use any integrated app, you'll need to have an account with that app as well. And you'll need to authorize JotForm to access it on your behalf. To start, click on Complete Settings. Then connect your Google Drive account. You'll need to authorize JotForm to upload files on your behalf and see files and folders in your drive. 
Once your account is connected, click Add Action. This will let you configure the Send Files step. First up, it wants us to enter a folder name. This is the name of the folder where your automatically uploaded files will be stored. If no folder with this name exists, it will be created in the root folder of your drive. Then you can enable this next setting to create a subfolder for each submission. If enabled, the subfolder will also need a name. It defaults to just using the submission ID to ensure that every subfolder has a unique name. I'll also just add data from a few other fields to make it easy to tell which subfolder belongs to which request. Under Send Submissions PDF to Google Drive, you can choose to upload a complete report of each form submission as a PDF. Under Send Uploaded Fields to Google Drive, you can also choose to directly upload any files that were submitted through the form. For instance, this would allow us to add the receipt images to Drive as well. This action is all set. In future updates, I'd love to see an option to test actions like this, but for now, we'll just have to wait to do a live test once we're done with the automation. The automation is almost finished, but I just want to show you one more thing in JotForm workflows before we wrap this up. Let's add some conditional logic so that our workflow can perform different actions based on different answers submitted. For our example, we'll assign a task to the original respondent to add a software credential to a password manager, but only if the expense category was set to software in their submission. To add conditional logic to a JotForm workflow, drag and drop an if-else condition element into your workflow. Ours will be the next step in the approve path after the request is uploaded to Drive. Then click Add Conditions to configure a condition to evaluate. Ours will be if expense category is equal to software. Then save your condition. Similar to the approval step, you'll need to create paths for each condition. So I'll draw a path. Click Select Branch and choose True. This path is for submissions that pass this condition. In other words, this path is for reimbursement requests pertaining to software purchases. Now I'll add an action that will assign a task. I'll use the basic task element to create a task within JotForm itself, though you could also use integrations to create tasks in Asana or ClickUp. Configuring this action is similar to the actions we've already covered. We'll just need to provide a task title and description. Then we can add multiple outcomes, but I'll stick with the one default choice, complete. We can choose an assignee here, which will be the person who submitted the form. Then we'll click edit to configure the custom email about the task. Okay, this task is all set. But now, since there's an outcome associated with this task action, i.e. the task being marked complete, we need to provide at least one subsequent action that follows an outcome. It's essentially the same as an approval step. It delays the automation until an outcome is reached, and the automation can't end on the outcome itself. Real quick, I'll just set up an email notification saying that the task has been completed. Since we don't want to do anything if this condition is false, we don't need to add a path for false. Now that our automation is all done, just to recap, it will run whenever someone submits a response to the reimbursement form. Then it will ask the specified supervisor to approve or deny the request. If they approve, the request details are uploaded to Drive. And if the expense category is software, the automation finishes up by assigning a task to the original respondent. Let's give it a test to confirm it all works as intended. I'd like to see more built-in testing features added to workflows in the future, but for now, you can always just run a live test. To do that, just fill out the form with some mock data. Then, wait up to a couple minutes for the automation to run.
Here in the inbox for my designated supervisor, there's a new message asking to review and sign this request. Great. I'll do that. Slap on the signature of old Xavier Ray himself and click sign. Before we move on and test the next steps in this automation, I just want to point out that approval flows like this are something that JotForm does very well. You can definitely build similar approval setups in any automation provider, but you'll almost always have to build them as multiple automations. But with JotForm, the workflow will just wait for the approve or deny outcome. You can even add multiple approval steps to the same workflow. While JotForm's workflows mostly provide basic automation features, this is one feature that even the big names like Zapier and Make could learn from. Now let's get back to testing this automation. Since this was a software request, we should see a notification soon in the inbox of our original submitter. There it is. We've been assigned a task to add credentials for this app to a password manager. I'll mark that complete. Now let's check Google Drive. When we open up the folder where we're storing reimbursement requests, we can see a new subfolder with a unique ID. Inside, there's a PDF summarizing the request, as well as a copy of the uploaded receipt. Perfect. When your workflow contains conditional logic like this, you'll also want to test other paths. You'd want to submit a request with a different category. Try clicking deny as the supervisor, and so on. Basically, you'd want to confirm that every iteration works as intended, within reason. Once you're done testing, this automation will be good to go. Next, let's take a quick look at JotForm's pricing and discuss how JotForm could fit in your automation stack. Right off the bat, you should note that automated workflows are included on all plans, even the free plan. The free plan gives you a lot of room to try out JotForm and explore its features. The main limitations on the free plan are generally usage restrictions. You're limited to five forms, 100 submissions a month, 100 megabytes of storage, and so on. Each paid tier will expand on these limits and will unlock some unique features along the way. For example, on the bronze tier, starting at $39 a month, you can remove JotForm branding from your forms. On gold, which starts at $129 a month, you'll be able to access HIPAA compliant features. And on Enterprise, which will require a chat with JotForm sales team, you can add multiple users to a single team account. Note that you can get a discount on all of these prices if you pay annually instead of monthly. All in all, I think it's a pretty solid price for everything you're getting. If you want to build a form with a multi-step automation involving approvals and integrations with other apps, this is one of the most cost-effective and efficient ways to do it. Especially if you want to take advantage of JotForm's wide range of form fields and widgets, like payment processing, CAPTCHAs, and signatures. You'd have to pay around $30 a month just for an automation provider, never mind apps for payment processing and signing docs. Plus, any approvals like the one we featured in this tutorial would require at least two separate automations, whereas JotForm makes it easy to build the whole process into a single workflow. That being said, JotForm isn't going to replace a tool like Zapier or Make if you're looking to build automations that go beyond forms and connect to a library of thousands of apps. The lack of some standard automation features like search steps and built-in testing means it can't compete head-to-head -head with standalone automation providers. But as a built-in automation utility on top of an already rich feature set for building custom forms, JotForm workflows are an impressive tool. Plus, it's not necessarily an either-or proposition. Both Zapier and Make can connect to JotForm, so you can use JotForm's built-in workflows when appropriate, and use Zapier or Make to fill in the gaps or connect to your broader automated infrastructure. JotForm's workflows are already a simple, convenient way to automate your forms, and I'm excited to see how the tool develops in the future. If you'd like to get started with JotForm, check out the resources board linked in the description below for links and more information. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.